Hey there, this is the Mortgage Minute. And if you're thinking about buying a home in 2022, you have to know these two names, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Check out the details after this. Hey there, it's Ryan Skaggs with the Mortgage Minute. Thank you so much for tuning in. This channel is dedicated to everything mortgage, real estate, and interest rates. And we're going to dive into those interest rates right now. So mid-January, last two weeks have been absolutely brutal for interest rates. We've seen rates move up quickly. So if you're looking at uh, you know purchasing in, say, fall or going into winter, likely rates are significantly higher. So you need to reach out to your lender right now to see what your budget is, ensure that you're, say, still pre-approved or where your uh, amount that you're looking to purchase or what that monthly payment might be. Um, with that said, the average 30-year fixed is 3.45, 3.45. That's according to Freddie Mac. They put out a weekly survey. Check out that link below. I'll put a chart up here. You can see the trend that we are going up in rates. Um, when you go over and check out that link, um, it'll actually give you a nice little market commentary of what specifically is going on um, in the market that's causing that. So while you're down there hitting that link, click that like button, click that subscribe. I put out weekly videos. I would be forever grateful. So let's get into the conversation today around Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And again, if you're buying a home in 2022, you have to know these two names. Now, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, to start with, let's go through a little bit history. They are government-sponsored entities. So they shorten that to GSE, government-sponsored entities. And what that means is they're federally backed, they're taxpayer backed. Um, Fannie Mae was a hybrid model um, from 1954 to 1968, and then in 1968 became this GSE model. Soon after, in 1970, Freddie Mac came through and they were created in a Congress-backed uh, kind of scenario, um, and they're purchasing mortgage-backed securities as well. So just give you a kind of a brief history. I'm not going to go into everything about them, but their function as a whole and why you need to know this is that they're purchasing mortgages originated from banks, from lenders, from brokers, from all kinds of different places like myself, right? So as a mortgage banker, we could be selling a loan to say Fannie Mae, but then we service the loan ourselves. You'd actually pay us on a monthly basis. But the actual debt itself is given over to Fannie Mae and they purchase it. And then they can package it up. If you've ever heard mortgage-backed securities, they're packaging up those mortgages together and then they are selling those off to say hedge funds or retirement funds or things like that. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac give that liquidity to the market. They're immediately saying, yes, I'll buy that. Yes, I'll buy that. Yep, I'll buy that one. Yeah, I'll buy that one. So therefore, there's always a buyer and kind of financial crisis right in the heart of it. They were buying 90% of all mortgages. I mean, they were the reason why we kept moving forward, even though as bad as it was, they were able to kind of churn and keep liquidity and keep things moving forward. So um, they're a very integral part. Now, probably the most important reason why you want to know who Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is, and I act like they're people, but they're, again, corporations that are backed by the government, is that Fannie Mae would have different guidelines than, say, Freddie Mac. So if you're, say, self-employed, for instance, currently Freddie Mac has a guideline that if you've been doing the job for five years plus and you can document it, then likely you would only need one year of tax returns. Fannie Mae requires two. So as you see averages and different years of things, you know, every scenario is different. You have to apply and be credit qualified and speak to a knowledgeable lender to understand what program is going to best serve you. But if you walk into, say, a bank or, you know, walk in and talk to one person and they're only underwriting to, say, Freddie Mac or only to Fannie Mae or only to something like that or only to their bank policy, then you're not getting a full picture of what's available. And that's really my point, is understanding and working with a lender that has multiple options for you that can actually say, hey, based on your scenario, I have a loan program that would fit your scenario, not just the one size fits all, but actually a tailored fit to, hey, I'm self-employed and this year was low, but this year was higher and this current year is looking even better, right? Or something like that. Um, you know, how they look at debt, say student loans, that differs between Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. There's different program guidelines, different down payment guidelines when it comes to, say, multi-units or things like that. 
So there's all kinds of different guidelines. And that's why speaking to a knowledgeable lender is so incredibly important that they know and understand these differences. So that way they can put together the best mortgage financing package for you. So again, this is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. There's a ton more. I'll put a couple of links down below. Again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I put out weekly videos. And this is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac for the Mortgage Minute. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see each other again very, very soon.